Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Soviet Russian Bear, and um, as I said, as I promised, I will be uploading more videos. So these are returning guests, and this is a Veronica, aka a Valiant, and Cody, aka Cody Strasser. So, so my first question is going to be to uh, Veronica. And uh, so you have listened recently, like uploaded a video on the monarchy and what is what you, do you think of of monarchy in the modern world and um, just monarchies? So and your video got taken down. I don't know why. So as I but I watched it on the on the alternative side side. So um, why did it get take down, taken down? Um. I think there's a few reasons why I got taken down. I was quite harsh in that video. I was calling the British royal family bourgeois cunts. But I think it also had to do with what I mentioned about Tsar Nicholas. Because um, I kind of offered an alternative opinion other than that conflicts with what other more popular YouTubers are saying. A lot of more popular YouTubers say Tsar Nicholas is a victim of communism, boo-hoo, he is so innocent. When in reality, if you look at his actions and the state of his country, he was an incompetent leader keeping Russia in World War I when no Russians wanted to fight the Germans. I mean, would you want to fight the Germans? I wouldn't want to fight Germans. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go to war. Well, I have to tell you this story that my great grandfather, who was just uh, like uh, from a peasant family of the Rizan Governorate, and in 1915 he got drafted into the Imperial German Army to fight the, uh, an, on the Romanian front against the Austro-Hungarian -Hung Army, and then when the when the revolution broke out and when the civil war broke out. He just he joined with the Red Army with the Bolsheviks because the Bolsheviks promised peace and bread and to, to end the war to end the hunger and they promised it but the the provisional government and the White Army they said no you should fight till the victory till the end so of course he joined with the Bolsheviks and I don't judge him because the the, the Russian nation the people were just very wary of war. This is why the Bolsheviks had power. This is why they had a lot of support to have the revolution. It's not like they just stormed in and killed the Tsar and everyone was depressed and Russia went to shit. No. People supported the Bolsheviks for a reason. Nobody yeah. wants to go to war. No one wants to watch their fathers and sons die. Like, seriously? Yeah, but uh, still, after that, my great-grandfather was joined the Bolsheviks in the civil war. And he rose to the to the rank of the commissar of a, of a company in the in the Russian civil war on the on the red side. And you know, I don't judge him for jo I, I, if I was on his place, I would probably join the Red Army too. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, they definitely did have. Uh, you see the. The, the, the Tsar was not really that well liked. Like people say, oh, he was such a great guy. Well, there was a lot of discontent. Yeah. You know. Well, in my opinion, the Tsar Nicholas was uh, a wrong guy at the wrong place at the wrong time. I think Russia needed someone like Peter the Great or Ivan the Terrible, who would. But, but the Tsar Nicholas wasn't just. He, I probably, I guess he would do much better. He would have done much better if he was like in the in the times of uh, if he was a tsar in the times of uh, peace and stability, but not the revolution when uh, when people and when the nation required uh, like very decisive and hard, uh, very decisive actions from the tsar. But he he didn't do that. Yep, he didn't. He was really out of touch with what the people were feeling. Absolutely. No one wanted to fight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Cody, you want to say something? Oh, yes. Um, I was going to say, well, um, Tsar Nicholas, uh, you know about the uh, the um, how Russia industrialized, right? Yeah, yeah. Prior to, prior to the Bolshevik Revolution. Yeah, yeah, I know. Stol yes, most of, their, um, most of their industry that was coming in, it, was, it became largely foreign-owned. By yeah. Britain, by France, and Britain. even a little in the, by the United States. 
So even though Tsar Nicholas was doing a little to industrialize the country, it was all foreign. None of it was Russian. And also the working conditions were terrible. There was workers' rights. Like, what was that? And like a 90% illiteracy rate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but still, I wouldn't say that the Bolsheviks did the, did the right thing to, to just kill the Tsar family. I think the Tsar was uh, like... Uh, th there was no need to to kill him so in such a in such a brutal way, and uh, I think the the killing of him was uh, in some sort of ritualistic. I think it was symbolic. Yes, yeah, symbolic. Yeah. I'm not sure how they could have dethroned him without killing him. Then people might have been just so angry that they just wanted to kill him, kill the entire royal family. If they were alive, they would still have influence over their loyal supporters, and there would be civil war for years and years. Could be, could be, but still, uh, I think that you, <laughs> they went too hard, because even Trotsky said that he he wants to see like the the trial over over the royal family, but uh, and and also Lenin said that. Uh, the um, the royal family like should be tried in the people's court in the people's court didn't you mm. but the Bolsheviks just say shoot them all uh, the revolutions re revolutionaries were extremely angry they just stormed in there and shot them all in the head <laughs> yeah yeah so you yeah, also... I wish that they had a court hearing or something to be more fair but uh, I, think, I, I think he would have, and they would have ended up getting executed anyways, even if they had a court hearing. Maybe, uh, but still, you mentioned also about the British monarchy. So, do you think that the British monarchy today doesn't have any like real power whatsoever? Because there are conspiracy theorists who say that pretty much the, the things are pretty much opposite and. Uh, the British monarchy does indeed have some real power, only they don't just don't show it too much. Well, there are a lot of YouTube videos up on YouTube criticizing the royal family, and they aren't getting taken down, other than mine. <laughs> but I think mine has to do with, with other topics in the video and the way that I worded things. But um, the royal family does have a bit of power. I know the Queen of England can go to Canada at any time and all expenses paid. She will be provided with security, hospitality, her travel, everything will be provided for. And uh, she's also allowed to uh, take away the prime minister if she feels like he's a tyrant or something. He's allowed to take his power away. So they do have a bit of power, but like... If they really had so much power, why isn't it obvious that they're using it? Why do they have no control over their nation? Why doesn't the Queen of England call all British citizens her subjects? <laughs> I mean, uh, they technically all are her subjects. Yeah, but she can't. But she do doesn't anything. really rule them, so they're not her subjects. Oh. So, um, also, it seems like a lot of the royal family in England is, they just want to, you know, relax and enjoy their money and have fun. It's pretty evident by their actions, since they can. They're very rich, and they don't have any responsibilities. Actually, I believe because the Queen endorsed gay marriage, that's how gay marriage got passed in Great Britain. So they do have power. Could it's be. mainly power over people's opinions and everything else. If the queen says it, well, it must be gospel. Wow. Well, gay marriage is getting legalized everywhere in the West, and um, but the law, the majority of the the majority of the parliament was against it before the queen spoke spoke out for it. So she had control over their opinions simply because she is the queen. <laughs> yeah, and you see. Uh, just if if the British monarchy doesn't like have real power, why does the Queen still has the rights to declare war and uh, all the bills ha had to be signed by the Queen herself? But I guess like the Queen is just too old, and the old people uh, just uh, old people are uh, more should I say weak-minded than the mature adult people. I, I suppose she will sign anything right now. She <laughs> 
like I said, it's an influential problem. It's not mm. the fact that she has any actual power. It's that her word of mouth, she can control other people simply because she is the queen and people respect her. Respect her a little too much because they don't have their own minds to figure out that just because the queen says it doesn't make it so. Well, yeah, I, I understand that, but still, uh, the queen uh, still has to sign all the bills before they get uh, implemented. Uh, so, is it? I, I just I think it's just a little bit more than just symbolic. To be honest, I don't know too much about um, the the British parliamentary system. Okay. Other than it's a very strange system, much different from that of the U.S. constitutional system. Well, I know it's pretty similar to, to the system in Canada, except we don't have the Queen signing Canadian bills. Uh, she pretty much will sign anything, like you, like you said. <laughs> she... Uh, it doesn't matter if she has the power to sign or not sign. She's just sh signing away like, oh, God, I want to get back to, to uh, sipping my fine wine. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Okay, so um, uh, Great Britain is not the only, like, nation in Europe which still has, like, uh, uh, formal, like, constitutional monarchy. I believe Sweden is also a monarch. Sweden is also a monarchy. Like Spain is probably also a monarchy. Um, uh, Norway. Denmark, I think no. Serbia has one too. Serbia? No, I think I Serbia think they is, a, they have a is a republic. I don't know. No, I think Serbia is a republic right now. Oh, they are. Okay. I know Norway. Um, I Norway has an incredible problem with their monarchy because the because the king of Norway. He came out last year and said that the Norwegian people don't exist. Wow. <laughs> Maybe in his mind they don't. <laughs> like, like, oh, Netherlands also has monarchy. Hmm. Is that part of the Habsburgs monarchy? Oh, I don't remember exactly. Okay. But um, pretty much all the monarchies in Europe are nominal at least like officially but what about the monarchies uh, in asia like the japanese monarchy as uh, you or uh, veronica said about the emperor of japan oh at least he does something like what does he do exactly like, some marine deep water researches or something yeah he's a marine biologist he's a pretty cool dude he's at least being useful <laughs> yeah he likes fish <laughs> Well, yeah. That's more of a hobby for him, though, the marine biologist thing. Yeah, but what yeah, about, well, he's cool. But what about the king of Thailand? Thailand? Thailand, yeah. I don't even know I don't know much, much about, about him that. either. <laughs> yeah. Well, North Korea has a monarchical system. Well, I think it's more like of a hereditary dictatorship, but still, maybe it's a little bit like monarchy, because, like, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il was his son, and then and now the Kim Jong-un is, is the son of uh, Kim Jong-il. But still, speaking about North Korea, well, I don't know why many old writers are attacking North Korea. Well, while they should be praising it, because it's really a very, very homogenous nation, like 99 point... 1999. That's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. It's because the, this majority of alt-writers are so brainwashed by pro-capitalist, anti-communist, anti-social propaganda. No, it's because they still... They, it's because they, they forgot... Uh, they didn't get the memo that the Cold War ended. Yeah. That's yeah. why. They, these, it's funny, these alt-writers say all the other wars were bullshit that America was involved in, but... Um, Cold Apparently, War Cold War was the only one Apparently, where the textbooks are right. They spread the truth about World War II, about the Civil War, about every war. <laughs> but suddenly, when you get to the Cold War and the Communists and the Soviet Union, suddenly, the official story is correct. And yeah. you are all Communist infiltrators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, and we brought up... If we and we brought up brought up this thing, even my interviews with Andrea Benz like multiple times, how incredibly selective the revisionists, the historical revisionists in the West are. Oh, everything about the Civil War was a lie. Everything about the Civil War, uh, about the World War One, World War Two, 
the, everything that was a lie. Everything about the Iraq war, about the war on terror, 9-11 was a lie. Oh, but then the Cold War. No, no, no. It was all true. Afghanistan was all true. The Cold War. Like, because, I mean, dude, like... Why Stalin did... killed a hundred bazillion people, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Holodomor, they will be incredibly open to revisionism on the Holocaust. But on Holodomor, like, no, 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 no. Oh, like, no. Yeah. They want to use the Holodomor as a victim card. They want to go, Oy vey, oh, That no. is because their ideology, the alt-right ideology, is dependent on, uh, is dependent on Keeping up the Soviet war crimes, keeping up the Soviet crimes like the Holodomor, even if they're, it doesn't matter if they're myths or not, they're dependent on it because they need a deflection tactic away from any accusations against fascist states or even the Nazi state. I mean, it doesn't matter. National socialists, because let's be politically correct here. I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, they need a deflection. So when anyone, if, if anyone brings up the crimes of fascist state or of... Uh, the National Socialist Germany. They need a deflection tactic away from that. So they say, well, how about the bazillion people killed by communism? Oh, the Holodomor. So they bring this up. Well, yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, um, that is their weakness, actually, because if you disprove the Holodomor, if you disprove the crimes of Stalin, their, their entire ideology falls apart because they have, since the beginning of, of the... Uh, white nationalism and uh, national socialism in America. They have built their ideology up around the crimes of the Soviet Union. So that, you tear that down, their entire ideology collapses. That's why they work so hard to defend it. That is why they won't accept any revisionism of the Cold War. And I think that's also why my video got banned, because of what I mentioned about Tsar Nicholas. It goes against that whole thing. Well, yeah, and uh, before uh, before the Soviet Union, there were like a lot of like famines and epidemics under the Tsars, but uh, nobody wants to count them as a crimes of horrible crimes of Tsarism, and hor like it's just people so so I don't know so selective. They uh, the Soviets get attacked and get criticized for every like sing single wrong move they make. But the Tsars and the European empires, they get a free pass. <laughs> and how they go? And let's talk about how they glorify the imperial age during the late nineteenth century. Yeah, okay. Even though that was like the worst age in European history. Not only because they said, "Oh yeah, who cares that we were exploiting uh, uh, the rest of the." A third um, non-white yeah. world. Yeah. Well, yeah, you may not care about that, but you're forgetting that. That was not petals and roses in Europe. That was the time of the worst exploitation. No one benefited in Europe. No, the European race did not benefit. The white race did not benefit. You know who benefited? Nobility. <laughs> yeah. The aristocracy. Oh, yes, the, the bourgeoisie. The economic, yeah, They're the, rich. The economic hierarchy of... Of um, Great Britain and France, and notice how imperial uh, colonial empires—they only benefit the the, the bourgeois class. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it, if you look at the difference between Great Britain and Germany, Great Britain had a vast colonial empire, correct? Correct. But look at Germany, mm, small colonial empire. But guess whose standard? Guess who? Fa guess whose people fared better? The German Empire, the because Ger they had a smaller colonial empire. And you know, a lot of the anti-white stuff that I hear non-whites repeating is, a lot of it is anti-British, because they talk about imperialism, well, who were the biggest imperialists? The who British. went into India? Who was exploiting the majority of the non-white world? It was mainly the British. Well, yeah, the British got their fingers in all the pies in, 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 the Af in Africa, in Asia, the opium wars, uh, the, the colonization of India, which was very brutal, but still, still, uh, I, I hear some of them, some of the British, like nationalists and Anglophiles, they still dare to call like all oh, Russia and Germany. They are so evil. They committed like the worst genocides, the Holocaust, Holodomor, blah blah blah. I said, dude, why don't you look in the mirror sometimes? 
and see that the British Empire was probably the most brutal, like, colonial empire in history in the, of the world. And this is, and this is not just my words. This is, this is well document, documented in history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the British Empire genocided more people, killed more people than the Germans, Russian, and Chinese combined. Wow. They probably killed more people than the Roman Empire did in a percentage of the population. I think they were more brutal than the Romans. Yeah, it's, it's incredible double standards and selectiveness and hypocrisy. Everybody, like, everybody in, in the West is... Not everybody, of course, I'm sorry. But the, the West is so like... Uh, the Western nationalists, even who are not... Who, who are against the status quo, but still somehow retain the Russophobia. Well, this Cold War propaganda is very recent. It's because the Cold War, yeah, it's because Cold War propaganda has seeped into the um, the nationalist um, uh, movements in Western Europe and in the United States, which it's it's I understand is seeping into the nationalists because the nationalists have always been anti-communist. Yeah, but even these people who call themselves national socialists. National socialists weren't opposed to communism in the way you guys are. They were opposed to communism on um uh, on a different level than um they weren't exactly it wasn't an economic fight. They didn't really see a problem with the economics of communism. Um the racial they fight. were opposed to communism on the basis of um, internationalism. It was, yeah, it wasn't particularly internationalism. It was, it, well, the way Spengler said it is he said it was the fairy tale of the international revolution of all races, where he said the international revolution will be of only one race. That was what, that is what the National Socialists were against. They weren't against the Socialist Revolution. They weren't against what the, what the Bolsheviks were doing with the economy. They were against the concept of the revolution of all races. It was more of a philosophical difference than an actual Economics. material um, economical difference. Yeah. And you got also the Tov Pact, right? Yeah. Where, um, the Rippenthrop Malt yeah. Ripen yeah. 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 Where the National Socialists were working with the Soviets for a little while until just tensions rose too high because, you know, Hitler was paranoid, Stalin was very paranoid, and uh, they just didn't trust each other. Yeah, yeah, they didn't. <laughs> because, uh, like, um, and, and, and what I've noticed also that, uh, that the, the Russian monarchy and the Prussian monarchy, they, they were pretty much destroyed. Like, Russian monarchy was destroyed in 1917, and the Prussian monarchy was destroyed in 1918. Mm -hmm. And the revolution in Germany happened. So wasn't this like a plot to destroy like the last Christian monarchies in Europe and destroy the currents, the, the Russian ruble and the, the German mark? Well, the Prussian monarchy was not really... It came to the point where the Prussian monarchy wasn't even really Christian anymore. They had adopted more of a secular view. They were more secular at the moment. Not radically secular like the West is, but moderately secular. It's where they had a freedom of religion. And for the point, the reason Germany did this is because they had, they had Lutherans and Catholics and they couldn't put in an official religion because of that. So they had to be secular. In other countries where they're um, where they have um, usually only one dominant religion that ninety eight percent of the population is, this isn't a problem having an official religion. The, uh, Russia would be a good good example where everyone's pretty much Russian Orthodox, or France where everyone's Roman Catholic, or so on. It's same thing in the United States. We have way too many Catholics and Protestants. We can't put in an official religion. Well, yeah, and uh, uh, and is. Isn't like I heard that English is not an official like official in I mean in doc legally official language. No, most people just speak it, and no, no, you don't have to speak English, and you don't have to put everything in English. Most people just do because 
Yeah. It's smart too. You're not. It, nobody's gonna buy your products if you put it in. I don't know Norwegian. It's the same thing in Mexico. Uh, Mexico has no official language either, but everyone speaks Spanish. Well, Russia has a fi- official language, and it is Russian. <laughs> oh yes, but still, yes. But I think did... Germany. I think Germany just passed German as the official language too. I'm not sure. I think they did. But still. Why does the U.S. do the same thing? Like, why shouldn't they pass the English as an official language? Because <laughs> it's going to start a shitstorm. You're going to have Mexicans. You're going to have the French speakers in Louisiana. You're going to have... There's, um, uh, no, there's... No, nobody speaks French in Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, they do. No, they don't. It's not like Quebec. Nobody speaks French in Louisiana. They all speak English. It's a strange accent, but they still speak Whatever. English. Whatever. There's so many people who speak different languages in the U.S. is just going to start a whole shitstorm. There's no point. Okay. So I heard also that among the American people, even the among like, the quite conservative American people, there are people who actually support British monarchy. Is, is that true? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, and it's ridiculous. Yes. It is really ridiculous. It's actually quite hilarious. How can you be a constitutionalist, right? Yeah. Base, holding American flags and everything, glorifying de- Declaration of Independence, and support British monarchy when the entire point of the revolution was was the fact of us hating monarchy, hating the king. Wanting to be a, get away from the king. They're, that was the entire point of the revolution. Their ancestors are rolling in their graves who fought in the Revolutionary War. Yeah. Like, oh, they say we need to preserve the traditional institution. Like, what good does that do? We're not British. Yeah, you are not British. We might, a lot of us might be of Anglo-Saxon descent, but we're not from the homeland. We have no. Con- we don't care about the king. Or the queen. <laughs> or the queen. Yeah. Or any of those douchebags in there. I, I don't care about them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good for you. And what about Canada? Are they still, like, under the, uh, formally under the British crown? No? Yeah? Uh, the queen is the head of state. In she Canada. has quite a bit of power, but she doesn't really directly control Canada. Her face is on the money, but... Other than that, she doesn't really have much influence in Canada. I'd, most people I see don't really care about the Queen. But there are supporters who still want her on the money. God knows why. Okay, and what about because, they have, because they have Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> and, what about the, yeah. and what about the Quebecois, the, the French-speaking Quebecans? They probably hate it. They, um, the anger towards the Anglos has died down, so, um, it's not like they're going out in the streets and protesting and burning their money. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you, Veronica, of, well, you are Anglo-Canadian, you have no, like, French connection or... Actually, my mom's side of the family did come from French Canada, my, uh, my dad is a Polish immigrant, so... She doesn't have any connection to Anglo-Canada, actually. As far as I know, I don't have any Anglo blood in me. Uh, so, Polish, like you said, Irish... Uh... Yeah, there's a lot of Irish inside of Eastern Canada. <laughs> It's a, it's a part of French Canada, the, the Irish. New Brunswick. It's, New Brunswick speaks both French and English. I think it's mostly French, though. I've been there a few times. But they're Irish descent, yet they speak French and English. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I heard also, like, Australia is also, like, the Queen is the head of the state here. In Aust- there, to be in Aust- honest... To be honest, I don't know too much about Australia and New Zealand. It's pretty much the same thing as Canada, where the Queen is head of state. She can go there, all paid expenses. She she gets free security, free hospitality, hotel, her travel expenses, all free. It's pretty much the same thing as Canada. Well, I have a very like a good friend in Sydney, Australia, who is a huge supporter of Russia. I guess I need to ask him. Well, he he's a he's a like he's an uh, an owner of Channel 
the West United for Russia. His name is Sean Davis. Probably you know the guy, no? You heard about this channel, no? No. Sean Davis? Yeah, Sean Davis. I didn't know he was from Australia. He was. He's from Sydney, Australia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. So you know the guy. I, don't I know. think if it's the same guy, yeah. <laughs> okay. I made a video for him while I stand with Russia. Okay. So, um, well, again, speaking of monarchy, so I see the descendants of the Romanovs. They are coming to Russia. They are visiting Russia. They, they, they start to visit Russia very often. But still, I wouldn't imagine, even in my nightmare, that the Romanov family ruling Russia again. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not after what they did last time. Yeah. <laughs> Just... Not even the Constitution. <laughs> no, please, no. No more Romanovs. Although my last name is the same, but I, I don't know. Please, this dynasty has no power over Russia. Let the Russian people decide. It's really stupid to appoint your leaders just because they're related to the previous leader. Yeah. Um, I assume you support meritocracy for Russia? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do. Okay, so Putin being having the uh, being um, the most qualified and having the most merit to run the country. Yes, I do think so. Okay. <laughs> I don't see an alternative to him yet, but I am sure by 2024 there will be a guy suitable to replace him. Who will? He'll be pretty old by then. He's getting up there in age. Uh, he's approaching 60 now. Well, actually, he. Well, actually, this year he already hit the sixty age uh, barrier, but um, I wanted to make the video congratulating him, like with candles, with his portrait, and with cakes, singing happy birthday. Yeah, just like you. Happy birthday, Putin! Happy birthday, birthday Putin. Putin! Happy birthday, Vladimir Vladimirovich! Happy birthday to you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but some people even joke to me that why don't you Russian just crown Putin as your new tsar? <laughs> I don't think he desi I don't think he desires to be czar. Absolutely, I think he doesn't. I don't think he wants. Does he even have any kids to uh, replace him? Well, he has daughters, like two or three daughters. I don't know exactly where they are, but I don't think he, he has any sons. It's just daughters. I guess his daughters could be queen after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was only one. There was only. There was a. Uh, only one uh, ruler of Russia that was w a woman. The only one I know of was Catherine. Well, yeah. Well, well Catherine the Great, and before her was uh, like, uh, um, well, uh, Catherine the Great was like the last and the most prominent like female leader of Russia. Before her was like one, two, or they yeah, had two women. No, three actually women ruling Russia. Well, she was the last and the most prominent, but after her, it was only ruled by men. But I, and many, like, Russian, including Russian monarchies, say that Catherine the Great was, like, the greatest and the best monarch in the Russian history. <laughs> I thought, I thought, I thought Peter would be, Peter the Great would be the best. No, uh, uh, somehow the Russian monarchists say he was the second best after her. <laughs> <laughs> he got a city named after him. After uh, who? Peter. Yeah, Peter. St. Petersburg. But during the Soviet period, he w it was called Leningrad. Yeah, but, they named it after Lenin. <laughs> well, actually, it was not named after the Peter, after the Tsar, the city. It was named after the after the Saint Peter, the. Uh, the oh, apostle. you mean Peter the Apostle? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but Tsar Peter was named after that apostle too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. it's kind of like naming the city after both of them. 
I thought it's because he built the city. That's why they named it St. Petersburg. No, no. The truth is, it was it was actually named after the St. Peter the Apostle. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, in the Soviet times, it was renamed Leningrad. But then, <laughs> when the Soviet Union collapsed, it was uh, renamed back into St. Petersburg. And in my honest opinion, it's better to be called St. Petersburg than Leningrad. I don't know. The name Leningrad's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, let's just keep St. Petersburg. Yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> let's just keep St. Petersburg. And uh, during the World War One, when the war was, when the war, the, the Germans were like the enemies, the main enemy. It was like renamed to more Russian sounding Petrograd. Oh. Uh, I believe I remember reading that. Petrograd, yeah. yeah. It was more Russian sounding because Saint Petersburg sounded too German, too German in in the in the opinion of the Russian patriots of that time, and it was named Petrograd. Oh, yeah. Hmm. You also should do research. Also, Veronica, you probably look up more information about the attack of the dead of the Imperial Russian Army in 1915. In the po the Polish fortress of Osovets. Okay. I look into that. Yeah, look into that, because like the Russian Imperial soldiers were gassed by the, uh, the 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 Imperial German army. They released the poisonous gas, the Ypres, and uh, and the, the Russian soldiers were just they coughing. They they were they were pretty much spilling their lungs out of, uh, but, but but they still like went to charge with the bayonets. Yeah, it's oh, I don't think the Russian army was prepared for to deal with chemical warfare yeah, at all. It was not prepared, absolutely not. The soldiers had to just take rags and uh, close their mouths with defend their lungs with rags. But yeah, it's called the Attack of the Dead, nineteen fifteen. Look, look into it, Veronica. I will. Yeah, it was yeah in Poland, Poland. Today, but today it's Poland, but it was, I, f I believe it was East Prussia back then, when K also Kaliningrad used to be called Königsberg. I know that. Yeah. Yes. And what do you think, Cody, yeah, about East yeah, Prussia? Yeah, traditional Prussian city. And Cody, what do you think about East Prussia, and uh, do you think that the Soviets keep it uh, rightfully so or not? My opinion? Yeah. The East Kaliningrad is Kaliningrad is historically German and should be German at uh, Konigsberg. Yeah, same. Okay, okay. Although I think Ukraine should be Russian. Yes, be Ukraine. Because um, I think, what's the difference between uh, like I'm looking at this and like what's really the j difference between Ukrainian and a Russian? Like the word Ukraine means borderlands. Well, yeah. what are you bordering? You're bordering Russia. And then that's about the same view I have on East Prussia and West Poland, right? Is it should be German? Because if you look at the haplogroups in uh, West Poland, they're nearly the same as those in what used to be East Germany around Berlin. They're, they're the same. Okay, okay. It's your take. I'm not going to attack you. I, I'm not... Uh, fine. I, I, I'm not, not, I didn't start this video for that. Okay, I just want to 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 to, uh, to hear your opinion. Okay, so <coughs> do you think that the the, the Habsburg Empire was um, what the, uh, the Austro-Hungarian the Habsburg monarchy? No, oh, God. They did they did a lot of bad stuff to the Slavic people of Eastern Europe. The Habsburg Empire yeah. is the reason there was a Slav, the reason there was a Slav, uh, Slav, Slavic Germanic conflict in the in the first place. There's a reason why Hitler was anti-Slav, and it's because he came from Austria. That was the main reason. Yeah, and of course, the maybe. Prussians had the Prussians had their um, had their um, dealing with the Slavs, but that was mainly Poles, not too much Russians, since the Prussians, the Prussian Empire, and the G Russian Empire. We're actually friends for a while. I mean, you had the uh, you had the triple you had the uh, tr um, alliance of the three emperors: the Czar, yeah, the Emperor, that. Yeah. and the Kaiser. 
And this was from the ve- from ni- from the early 19th century during Napoleon Napoleonic Wars, when R- when Prussia, Russia, and Austria all joined forces to stop to drive back Napoleon. Okay, yeah, and Napoleonic Wars also, like I can trace my ancestry back to the end of 17th and or 18th and beginning the 19th century. And I also have an ancestor, great, 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 great grandfather, who fought in Napoleonic Wars against the the Ar- army Grande, <laughs> like uh, Grand Army. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, still, despite Russia being a, <coughs> a mo- excuse me a monarchy and defending monarchies in eighteen forty eight. When the Austrian monarchy was facing uh, defeat from the Hungarians, the Tsar Nicholas I he sent an army of one hundred thousand Russian soldiers to suppress the Hungarian rebellion, and he saved the, <coughs> the excuse me Austrian monarchy from a total defeat. Do you know about this? No, actually, I don't. I never heard of that. Yeah, but I knew there was conflict between the Austrians and the Hungarians. But I thought the Austrians solved it by joining, the, by um, by having some type of royal marriage with the Hungarian monarchy. Well, and creating the Austro-Hungarian, Austro, sorry, Austro-Hungarian Empire instead of just the Austrian Empire. Well, there was actually a Russian expedition to help to help suppress the Hungarian rebellion and to preserve the Austrian monarchy. I think if Russia didn't send its uh, troops. Probably the Austrian, the Habsburg monarchy would have fallen in 1848. Hmm. But, uh, but the ungrateful Austrian monarchy didn't support Russia in the Crimean War because the, <coughs> in, 19, uh, in 1855, <coughs> the Anglo-French and the, in, in, a li- in an alliance with, you know how, how, how strange it is, like, uh, two Christian like uh, nations like England and Fra- uh, Britain and France allied with a Muslim Ottoman Empire against Russia. Yeah, that might have been because they didn't have enough power to fight off the British and French who would have attacked them. Maybe. Yeah, th- there's no way they could have done. They could have fought it off. Yeah, but the Crimean War. I think it's actually the first like war when uh, when. The British and and the French, and it's like the, the only war probably where the British troops and Russian troops had a, a hot war, a hot war between each other. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Although I can, although I think that was kind of an instigated war on the side of the Anglo-Saxons. Yeah, but why did the? This is what the this is what the Iron Maiden song "The Trooper" is written about. The Crimean War, yeah. Uh, and also, like, the, the, the British Empire and the Russian Empire, they had their own, like, the first, like, 19th century version of the Cold War. It's called the Great Game. Because the British were scared shitless that the Russians will get to India and conquer India from them. <laughs> Hmm. Haven't you heard about the great game, Connie? I knew there was a. I did knew there was a competition between the Russian Empire and the British Empire it was, it because was. the Russians spreading spreading uh, eastward. Yeah, and the Russian. I were, didn't know exactly what it was about. Well, the Russian were sp- the Russians were spreading in Central Asia because they were like afraid that the the British will go there first and colonize the Central Asia and uh, start to threaten Russia. But mm, in, so they got the, so that's why they spread eastward. Yeah, mm, and the British smart. and the British feared that uh, the Russians will uh, will gain control will gain control over the Central Asia and then Afghanistan and uh, and then invade India and end the British rule over India. Well, I think if the Russian army uh, actually um, planned. Uh, an expedition to India and invaded India. I think the Indian, the oppressed Hindi people, 
would have uh, eagerly joined the Russian army against the British. Wouldn't you agree? At the Yes, the, yeah, they definitely would have joined. I have no doubt that the Hindus would have joined. However, I'm not sure if the if even the Russian Empire, even if the Russian army and the Indian rebels would have been strong enough together to fight off the British because the British were just so technologically advanced compared to the Russians at that time. I mean, the Russians really didn't catch up to the West until um, after Stalin. I thought they were caught up during Stalin. Stalin caught them up, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah but still... Uh, it's not, it would have been interesting, but... Yeah, yeah. Prob probably still defeated. Well, pro probably, but still... Um, and when Stalin... Well, speaking about Stalin, many of, uh, like... Uh, I don't know how to call them, like... The social justice Marxists or Leninists, they say this is Stalin was pretty much the Red Tsar. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they called him a Red Fascist. Well, Red Fascist too, but some actually called that Stalin was pretty much a Red Tsar. <laughs> well, at least he was socialist. A social Tsar. <laughs> <laughs> at least he caught Russia up to the West. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, they weren't no longer they were no longer a backwater. They were actually a world power, a superpower after World War Two. Yes, and this is the reason why I can't dismiss the whole Soviet period from the Russian history. Although I believe that um, it's my pers my personal belief that Russia uh, could have <coughs> achieved the things it did achieve without a revolution, but still. Yeah, it would have been very hard. Maybe. I think. Maybe. But still. Maybe under better leadership. Yeah, maybe under, under better... Not under Nicholas. It was due to... It was due, yeah, yeah, the reason Russia was so behind was really due to incompetent leadership. Hard to disagree. But still. Yeah. Why I don't accept uh, the revolution as a some, some, something very good because the civil war started and millions of millions of people died and then repressions and terror and uh, uh, just uh, they, I believe there could have been a way to prevent this I just uh, so many people died and so many uh, just b before the World War II the civil war the purges the repressions, because uh, uh, the Soviet, like Stalinists and Soviet apologists say that, no, it's only like people who deserved uh, went to gulags, but but there were also many innocent people who also got uh, sent to gulags. Well, there were a lot more of uh, bad people than innocents, from what I've seen. Well, I obviously don't trust the Solzhenitsyn when he says that like, oh, Stalin, like, the, the total amount of victims was like 60 million or even 100 million people. I think that, that number is exaggerated. It's really hard to have a really foolproof system of justice mm -hmm. because, you know, innocent people who are at the wrong place, wrong time, who happen to, you know, say the wrong things, always get screwed over. You also have the fact that there's some people within the state that use that as a, as a chance to get rid of anyone they don't like. Mm-hmm. That happens in every, uh, during every revolution. It happened during the American Revolution. Most people don't know about that. There was a purge of a uh, loyal of um, uh, loyalist to the king. It had the, it was the same thing. Yeah, every, they were actually pretty similar. And during the French exactly. the French Revolution, there there also was a purge. Yeah, a purge there too. <laughs> reign of terror. Yeah, the reign of terror. Absolutely, but still. I am against the restoration of monarchy in Russia. No thank, uh, th thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> yeah. You, Doesn't Putin have like an 80 or 90% approval rating? He does. 
I think it's like 80 something. Yeah, 80 yeah. something, yeah, not 90, but 80 something. And yeah, and recently he has announced that he is running for president again. And you guys <laughs> know for whom he is Well, the why not? Yeah. He keeps winning. And he People seems like yeah. him and he's not <laughs> yeah, old yeah, yet. Yeah, you guys know for whom I'm going to vote, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I know who you're voting for. <laughs> you know already. <laughs> That's great, yeah. Okay. So, um, so for the final word of our video right now, I think we should say something about... So, do you guys consider monarchy as an obsolete form of government? Outdated? Absolutely obsolete is my view. Yes, it and very inefficient and terrible system of government that should never be considered again. Except in North Korea, it seems to work there. <laughs> yeah. For now. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, North Korea will fall under, will fall just like the other monarchs did, and they will need to have some type of meritocracy or, uh, I don't know, some different system of government because, like, the Kim family... Oh, okay, Kim Jong-un, he's not that bad of a guy. And by the way, the Kim family's related to Korean emperors, so they are monarchs. Yeah, they were Korean kings. But uh, you can't... Like, uh, Kim Jong-un is not as good as his grandpa and his dad was. And it's just gonna get... It was the first Kim was definitely the best. Yeah, it's just gonna... The next Kims are just gonna be worse and worse and worse. Because they cannot live up to the standards of the previous Kims. So, <laughs> yeah. they're going to need some type of meritocracy, some yeah. way to choose competent leadership. Yeah, absolutely. But Hopefully they won't get nuked or killed. Well, with Trump, we can't <laughs> expect anything. I, 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 I'm kind of disappointed. This thought is not related to the topic of the video, but I'm very disappointed in Trump right now. We all are. Yeah. Pretty sure ninety percent of people had higher expectations. The only people that like him still are some of the f stupid nat caps on the alt right. National capitalists are the only people that still like him. Uh, there's still people who like what he says and uh, have a lot of hope for him. They, they I don't know. Yeah, I mean, people who can't think for themselves. <laughs> Well, it's just kind of funny that most, like, it seems like so many people of every ideology is discontent with Trump. You have capitalists who don't like him. You have liberals who don't like him. You have communists who don't like him. You have people on the far right that don't like him. It's quite chaotic. Well, let's start that the liberals and the communists, they disliked him from the beginning. But I think, I'm sure the far right people and just libertarian right types of and capitalist right, they probably, they genuinely supported him and liked him at the beginning when he was running, when he's doing his like first months in in the mm -hmm. president, in the White House, yeah? Yeah. Yes. And now those people feel betrayed and they're confused and disappointed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, there were memes uh, like calling Trump the God Emperor. <laughs> it's interesting was... because only the anar only the anarchists and the Trotskyists or the communists that hated Trump. Um, I knew there were some Stalinists that liked them, some some more authoritarian communists that liked him at first. But they don't like him anymore. Yeah. Along with my people, even the people, even Nat Rebs, National Revolutionaries, we don't like him anymore. You know, the, the Strasserists, the, um... Yeah, I know. I know. Nazbols. The Nazbols, yeah. Nazbol for lack of a better army. word. Naz National Bolsheviks, for lack of a better word. <laughs> Nazbol um, Army. Don't, don't like him. Yeah. That's just the name they decided to call the Nat Revs, the National Revolutionaries, as Nazbols. They decided to call us that <laughs> for some reason. But I think even though we're not National Bolsheviks, the Nazbols is a exclusively like Russian term. Yeah, uh, they they don't understand that. I kept telling them, I can't be a National Bolshevik. I'm an American. 
<laughs> Yo, I can't be, but I'm not. I'm sort of yes. like Putinist, Dugnist, Eurasianist, that's who I am, but definitely not Nazball. And if Nazball's like, if uh, my if my opponents say that, oh, Putin, Dugnist, Nazball's, come on, if Putin was so pro Nazball that uh, and, uh, Eduard Limonov would, would be would not be in jail, and the, Nazb the, the, the other Russia party wouldn't be banned, I mean, come on! What the guy said. Limonov was Limonov is really a joke, anyway. Him himself, <laughs> he's really disgraced to, na to national Bolshevism. <laughs> yeah, and Dugin is not a Nazball, although he was like with Limonov uh, at first when when they begin the career their careers. But still, if Dugin was so like favored by Putin. Why he got kicked off out of the Moscow University, Moscow State University, like the most, the biggest and the most prestigious university in Russia, the Moscow State University, where where Dugin was a professor, and he got kicked out after he said kill, kill, kill. Uh, he he didn't mean to kill all Ukrainians, only the the Banderites, the anti, yeah. the anti. But but he kicked, he <coughs> excuse me, he got kicked out anyway. And Putin didn't do anything. But but still, among those old writers and liberals and genuinely Russophobic people, they say, "Oh, Dugin is so close. He just whisper. He he whispers in Putin's ears." No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> a... No, he's not. Um, no, he's. Now I think he even said that uh, Russia as a. Let me say that Russia is an exploitive has an exploitive oligarchy or something like that. He said something about that. I don't I don't remember. Something about the oligarchy. I don't remember. Yeah, it was in an interview. But yeah, yeah, he criticized. Yeah, he did criticize the current um, system of Russia. So I don't think he's in control of Putin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If he's criticizing the current system of Russia, I don't think he controls Putin. Yet. He does have a lot of influence, though. He has some influence over geopolitics, yeah, probably. Absolutely, absolutely, he does. But not over actual domestic or social policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, for those people, for those outriders, anti-Russian outriders who say, "Oh, Dugin literally like control Putin, controls Putin." <laughs> What kind of idiots are they? <laughs> My, I guess he uh, no. Don't you know he has special mind control powers? <laughs> and according to the alt right, he's also a Jew. <laughs> yeah, although he doesn't even look like a Jew. And he's an Orthodox. He's a devout Orthodox Christian. <laughs> well, if you ask Sinead McCarthy, Orthodox Christian and Orthodox Jew is the same. <laughs> I believe Sinead said sometime that uh, Orthodox Christianity is pretty much Orthodox Judaism. <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. She's saying that because the, the, the priests have long beards. <laughs> That's pretty much why she's and saying that. Because the women wear, like, headscarves. Uh, can you do an impression of Sinead and say with him? Oh, God. <laughs> Um, yeah. say, oh. yeah. I haven't listened to her in so long because she actually has taken down like all of her radio shows and she doesn't make YouTube videos, so I haven't uh, had any entertainment. <laughs> like, I don't even remember the way she used to talk. It's been months. Like, I believe she was, was taking. She stopped making videos in like uh, August or September. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It was a long time ago. <laughs> so she's going through a lot of troubles right now. Really? Uh, financial troubles. Uh, Recently, there was this guy. Ver he had a verified Twitter account. I think he was a journalist, but he was tweeting about how she has uh, lost her job and that she's she was trying to look for work on Care.com, which is mm -hmm. an app that you can use to be hired by people. So. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, we rather not poor, make we rather girl. not make this all about Sinead McCarthy since she's a thing of the past. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Reni her and Renegade seem to support monarchy. Yeah. A traditional institution. Yeah. Oh my God! Many old writers support mother monarchy, like Red Eyes, uh, the Golden One. Even I think even Paul Joseph Watson supports monarchy. 
That's because there's this old neo monarchist movement that was the. It used to. It used to be a large part of the alt right. It largely got destroyed, but the remnants of the neo monarchists that used to heavily inhabit the alt right. And that's what really separated my video out from Red Isis from the Golden One was that I was not only criticizing the institution of the monarchy, but I also criticized the czar. Which they don't do. And I remember in the Golden Ones video, he was like, oh, he's the liberals, the people who control the world. They started at the Bolshevik Revolution. They want to attack all the monarchs. They want to take away this tradition. Uh, <laughs> your tradition is falling apart because it's outdated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I think we have done a great video today. So I will upload it today, probably tomorrow. Yeah, it's been great having you on my channel, guys. <laughs> yeah. It's been a pleasure being here. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I have to go now. Bye. See you around. See you later. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Dos Fidonia. <laughs> yeah, dos Fidonia.